If you are currently leveling up your Django and Postgres skills with this tutorial, you might like to know that this tutorial is part of a whole playlist where you will learn how to, with Django and Postgres, create database level constraints and triggers. If you like this playlist and you would like to learn more about Django ORM, then do check out our Django ORM Mastery course on Udemy. Links to the playlist and course can be found in the video description. Now, first and foremost, if you have been following along step by step so far in this course, like I said in the previous tutorial where I showed you the new updated database design, I did make a few tweaks when I migrated the design from Lucidchart over here to Draw.io. So you will find that some of my models, and I have added a few more tests because of those changes, the code or the source code will be slightly different from the one that you have. To make the changes that are needed to bring your code base up to where we're going to start is going to be really simple for you. So I'll explain that in a second. So whether you need to do that or whether you just want the setup guide, how to get started so that you can start this module. If you haven't completed any of the other modules, I'll take you through that process also in this tutorial. As you are already watching this tutorial, if you look on the right hand side where the tutorial list is, you'll find a resource folder for this tutorial that you're currently watching. Go ahead and download the zip file that should be named source code Django post grass start dot zip. So this is the startup code for this tutorial. So just go ahead if you're on Mac, double click that or if you're on Windows, right click extract, that should open up a new folder. And now we can go ahead and open up your code editor. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. Whether you're updating the code or whether you are trying to get the code started, ready for preparation for this module, head over to the top menu. I know you can't see that, but select file and then open folder. I'm gonna grab the folder that I've just extracted. You can place it wherever you like, of course. Mine is on the desktop. I'm gonna open that. So if you want to update the code because you have been following along and I've made those few changes, then what you need to do is just go into the inventory, go to the models, copy and paste that into your project. And then secondly, what you'll need to do is go into the tests and just copy and paste the inventory structural tests and with those two changes, you'll bring your code base up. If you have been following along step by step, you'll bring your code base up to where we're going to start in this module. Now, for anyone who is new and you want to get this project started, what you're going to need to do, three step process, download the source code. We've already done that. Secondly, we're going to need to create a new virtual environment. So whether you're on Windows or Mac, we're going to type in this into the terminal. If you can't find the terminal, you can drag from the bottom or go into the top, uh, top, select the, the terminal item in the menu and new terminal. You can't see that, but that's what you're going to need to do to open up the terminal. Right. So in the terminal, I've typed in pytest m venf venf. That's going to create the new virtual environment. It says no file or directory found. found. Okay. What have I done wrong here? Uh, oh, <laughs> I've typed in PyTest. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Python, apologies. I've got PyTest on my brain. Right. So with that done, you can now see this new virtual environment folder. So what you're going to now need to do is activate it. So on Windows, you're going to type in vmv slash script slash uh, activate. Now, if that doesn't work, it might be a backslash. I might have used the wrong slash, but there is a setup guide at the start of this course. So Go ahead and do that if you're on Windows. If you're on the Mac, I'm going to type in source, then uh, bin, activate, and there we go. So if you can see the vent name on the left hand side here of your prompt, then you're ready to now go ahead and install all the requirements. So the last step is to pip install and then the requirements. So you need the R flag requirements.txt. That's going to install all the dependencies that are needed to start this project. Once that's done, you can go ahead and test it out. Let's run PyTest. And you can see that we do have one warning, 10 errors. Now, for me, the reason why that is like that is because in actual fact, I think I'm in the wrong um, virtual environment. The way that I have my computer set up, I'm in and out of virtual environments all the time. So if you do have this problem, then what you might like to do is just close this terminal 
a start a new terminal and I'm just going to go back into the virtual environment again and then I'm going to run PyTest and you can see this time it worked okay. So I get this now and then because I've got multiple projects open. For some reason it just doesn't map across nicely to the virtual environment that I've just created and I've been in, went into. So if you do have that problem, you know how to fix it, but that's what you should be receiving once you have successfully set up the project and now you're ready to follow along with the rest of this module. Like I alluded to, if that was a bit too quick for you, there are setup guides at the start of this course. You can go ahead and look at the setup guide for your operating system.